The 60 meter dash is the most challenging race. It resists progress more than any other discipline in athletics, since the shorter the distance, the less endurance becomes a factor and the less improvement comes from the hard work. For this reason, precision, relaxation, and patience play a major role in achieving success at the event. As a matter of course, the 60 meter world record usually belongs to the best 100 meter runners. It comes as no surprise that the year before his Olympic triumph, Jesse Owens set the first notable global standard for the indoor sprint, fixing the 60 meter world best at 6.6 .6 seconds. Owens was an all-around athlete who participated in multiple events that allowed him to develop incredibly rhythmic, relaxed, and economical movement. His record was tied by several other athletes during the following four decades, until in 1976, a Soviet sprinter, Valery Borzov, established a new height with a fully electronic time of 6.58 seconds. Borzov built a reputation as a fierce competitor with the power of mind over physical barriers. His smooth running style and trademark relaxation became a new concept of speed. He was known throughout his career for technical mastery and scientific approach to the training process. Following Borzov's success, coaching and training techniques in the West quickly became more scientific. Two years later, a promising young sprinter, Houston McTeer, took the world by surprise, topping the list of the fastest 60-meter runners. It wasn't just a, a normal race, it was a world's record. Were you ready this early for a world's record? Well, I was, I was looking for a good time, but not a world record. McTeer ran a 6.38 in 1980, but that result has been annulled due to questionable timing. If that time were to stand, it would survive the Bolt era. However, his meteoric rise was effectively ended by the American-led boycott of the 1980 Summer Olympics. Between 1986 and 1987, Ben Johnson had broken the world record three times, taking it from 6.54 to 6.41. At the World Championships in Rome, electronic timing devices caught him at the 60-meter mark in 6.38 seconds. A year later in Seoul, he was clocked at an unreal by the standards of that time, 6.33 seconds. Ben Johnson was a very loose and flexible athlete. Above his unmatched explosive power, his ability to relax through the race was the key to his supremacy. He could become one of the biggest names in the history of athletics. Unfortunately, he made some poor choices as a professional. After admitting to steroid use, he was stripped of all records. The 60-meter world record was given to Lee McRae, who was the second to Johnson with 6.50. In 1991, Leroy Burrell had run 6.40. His lightning reaction scared the judges, and they concluded that he had left the starting blocks too soon. Burrell was very upset and demanded justice. It was decided to repeat the race 10 minutes later, where he finally recorded 6.48 seconds, cutting two hundredths off the existing best. Burrell was particularly good at 100 meters. When he managed to find self-confidence, the world record gave way to his powerful and relaxed gallop. Andre Kaysen broke Burrell's world record a year later with a time of 6.45 seconds, and then lowered it to 6.41. Great running technique and unparalleled ability to relax made Kaysen the fastest, shortest guy in history. Andre, you keep going faster, faster, and faster. You seem extremely focused. Well, that's the goal, to remain focused and to remain relaxed. At the end of the 20th century, no sprinter on earth was more dominant and more feared than Maurice Green. His technical superiority and strength of mind put him far ahead of any competition. Green dominated every race by being highly efficient in the first 30 meters, not using any more energy than necessary. Now this allowed him to get more acceleration and faster top speed through the race. I had to carry out my drive phase at the beginning of the race and just stay relaxed and carry everything through. Putting this successful race strategy into action at 60 meters, he clocked 6.39 twice in 1998 and 2001. Green registered his fastest 60-meter split of 6.33 seconds in what he considers his best and also his most frustrating performance. 
On the way to winning his third consecutive 100-meter title, he got injured 30 meters before the finish, thus missing a chance to post a sub 9.7 clocking. 20 years later, Christian Coleman casually sped to 6.37 in the first race of the season. The following month, he took the record further down to 6.34. Now, technically, the fastest time in history belongs to Usain Bolt, who recorded 6.31 on his way to smashing the 100-meter world record in Berlin. Coleman's fastest 60-meter split time is 6.32 seconds, which puts him in a position to potentially attack Bolt's record if he can develop the right technique and master relaxation in the last 40 meters of the race. Now, some sprinters excel only over 60 meters at fade in 100. This happens because the real skill of a great sprinter comes in when trying to maintain momentum after reaching top speed. Most sprinters try too hard, get tight, and defeat themselves, as tight muscles consume multiple times more energy than relaxed ones. Given that modern sprinters have better sports technology and medicine, advanced nutrition, harder spikes, and faster tracks, the world record could be around 9.3 by now, but relaxation over the last 40 meters yet remains the limiting factor.